Good evening and welcome to Vespers, our service of evening prayer at Charter House. I am Pastor Rachel Hansen. I am so happy to welcome you to this online service. I also do invite you to come in person to the chapel every Sunday at 4 p.m. If you need help, I'm sure the staff will help you to come down and, and enjoy in-person Vespers at 4 o'clock each Sunday afternoon. I now invite you to enter into worship with me in peace. Let us pray. O oh God, mighty and immortal, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body so that even when we suffer because of human limitations, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all God's benefits, who forgives all your iniquity who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. God made known God's ways to Moses God's acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you forgive all our sins and put them far from us. As an eagle to her young, you nourish and renew us with your tender love. Sustain us each day of our mortal life that we may seek your healing for all who are in need and bring us at last with saints and angels to bless and praise you forever. We pray through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Here we meet our Lord Jesus as he sees a woman who is bent over and has suffered from the, this oppressive condition for 18 years. And this uh, story or this occurrence happens in the Bible only in the Gospel of Luke, the great healer. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, you hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame. And the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. Here ends the gospel reading. Let us pray. Loving God, please open our hearts to your will and your choice for healing and life. 
and help us to follow you and help us to reflect this love and mercy to all whom we meet. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Probably each one of us has known someone who's bowed down and bent over by disease. One such person is the woman in today's gospel. And it may be that we have seen how in some people who are bowed over and bent down with disease, in some people, Jesus' love is radiant. That person has somehow found a way to be spiritually alive so that they are a source of love and wisdom to others. It is as if Jesus laid a hand on them and their mind and heart and spirit stood up straight, more straight than I can even imagine. And they have become alive with God's love. One person like this was Charles, my classmate in second grade at country school, Salt Marsh District 93 in Kansas. Charles was born with his two legs ending just below the knee. He had crutches and he had wooden legs held in place with a leather harness. This harness and his crutches would be joyfully laid aside at recess. Once we had gotten ourselves speedily over to the swing set to experience the high flight, and I'm telling you the swing set was not made according to the requirements of OSHA. It was high. The bars were of iron. They went way up in the sky. And that swing, when you're on that swing, you could go so high. It was positively dangerous. I remember seeing, as a second grader, the harness and the crutches thrown down in the dusty dirt of the swing set of our country school as Charles flew higher and higher in the swing. Decades later, I visited Charles and found him living happily with his wife, kids grown, in the same little town five miles from our farm and from the school. He was a happy man. Why? Why was Charles happy? Because he loved and he was beloved. Is there any other way that a man or a woman can stand up straight? The crooked straight and the rough places plain in Handel's Messiah, the prophet sings a deep reverberating bass to shake us from our inertia and cynicism. God's enormous power will shake the universe and rearrange what is crooked. Most of all, our twisted hearts and our sin-wracked lives will be made whole. But not only that, we Christians believe that all creation, this creation, will be made whole. The resurrection of the body that our Lord experienced himself will be felt in the mountains and the cracked places, the bombed and the polluted areas. The desert will bloom like a garden. The tree of life will be rustling with leaves for the healing of the nations. And also we believe that resurrection will be felt in our individual bodies as it was for the woman bent over for 18 years. She felt it. No matter what time does for us, my dear friends, God said to us in Jesus, I will not leave you comfortless. I will go and I will come to you that where I am, you may be also. We will be together. The power of love is stupendous, absolutely creative. We all can love again Whatever our pains and losses, whatever our physical condition, we can still open our hearts to be loving, even with our suffering. We can all love again, even when that most difficult person to love 
who is yet worthy of our love, ourselves. In the meantime, what shall we do? How shall we proceed, stumbling through each day or noticing the stiffness again as we struggle to get up from the table or to put one foot in front of the other? How are we to live? We can live using the hope of Jesus as our stay and guide. We can believe in him. How do we explain what Jesus did for the woman in Luke 13? Must we explain that it was probably this or that disease? I don't think so. One of our great grandfathers in the faith, Augustine, wrote, Seek not to understand that you may believe. Seek to believe that you may understand. I think Augustine had it right. This is not a cop-out. It's not a refusal to acknowledge our pain and our suffering, which are so real. But it is instead the fruit of that same suffering that all of us who have lived and loved have found out for ourselves, and it is this. The line between love and suffering is a direct line. We are open up to God in the process of both loving and suffering. God is very near. I want to jump and run or crawl like Charles. I want to be like Charles and live with joy. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray the prayers of evening in closing with the Lord's Prayer using the words sins and sin. Let us pray. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and listen to my cry. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. In righteousness I shall see you. When awake, your presence will give me joy. Be present, merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of life may find our rest in you through Jesus Christ our Lord. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed. The fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. We pray through Jesus Christ our Lord. We give thanks to you, heavenly God, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously protected us this day. We ask you to forgive us all our sins where we have done wrong and graciously to protect us tonight. Into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies, our souls, and all that is ours. Let your holy angels be with us so that the wicked foe may have no power over us. In your name we pray, amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as our Lord Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me for Vespers today. I now invite you to receive the benediction. The God of peace the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. <laughs>